Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Paul Jay in Baltimore. Now joining us from Lebanon to discuss the situation in Syria and the conflict as it spills into Lebanon is Ali Hashim. Ali is the chief correspondent for Al Mayadeen, a new news network based in Beirut. We'll be on satellite TV across the Middle East. Thanks for joining us, Ali. Welcome. So just to remind people, Ali used to be a correspondent at Al Jazeera and left. And uh, you can watch our stories, which we'll post below here about why he left Al Jazeera. But today we're going to focus on uh, his new role as chief correspondent. And one of the areas, of course, he's concerned with is Syria, and then particularly how the Syria conflict has been spilling into Lebanon. So, uh, Ali, let's start first of all. Uh, what, what do we know of the massacres that have taken place recently in Syria? Uh, one where more than 100 people were killed, and we're told many of them were children, killed execution style. And then there's a new one, a new discovery today. The United Nations announced that in eastern uh, Syria they found 13 people bound and executed. And according to most Western governments and, and the UN, they are clearly blaming the Assad regime for the massacre, and the Assad regime is saying it wasn't them. What, what, what so far can you make of all this? Um, actually, regarding what's going on in Syria, it's kind of chaos. No one knows really what's going on. Uh, as you said, uh, there, is, there are some um, you know, accusations for the regime that they did the massacre. At the same time, the regime is accusing the opposition of committing the massacre. What's really clear, according to the United Nations, is that uh, those people were killed with uh, cold blood and they were killed with uh, knives and, uh, uh, you know, uh, and guns uh, from very close uh, uh, distance. And a few uh, group of them were killed uh, by the uh, uh, bombardment that was uh, done by the regime's uh, army. Uh, to be frank, you know, uh, today you wouldn't be able to get uh, a piece of news from Syria that's 100% accurate. Everyone is trying to show that he or, you know, or the party is uh, representing is the right side. Uh, the, the regime will say that those people who were killed in, in the Hule, uh, in, in, in Homs, were Shia, and, the, and uh, there were other at the same time, the opposition will say that these people are, are Sunni, so that both of them will show that you know uh, they have no interest in killing those people. But to 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 go more, you know, to zoom more into what what happened, it, it's a it's a it's a bloody massacre that is condemned by everyone. A massacre that. Uh, Killed a lot of uh, a, a lot of children were killed in it. It's more, I think more than 45 children were killed. At the same time, after this massacre, another massacre was committed in another uh, village, which which is maybe a few kilometers away from uh, Hule. So uh, what we are uh, right now facing in Syria, it's it's not anymore uh, a fight between a regime and an opposition. It's kind of a, uh, an ethnic or sectarian cleansing that is uh, wiping uh, big families and big. Uh, uh, you know, villages around, around the country. Now, one of the stories that, that's been reported uh, through some of the opposition activists that were interviewed by one of the news organizations over Skype, uh, the report was that a senior military officer was uh, killed by the opposition, and then thugs that support the regime sort of took revenge and went into the village and, and committed th these executions of the civilians. Um, mm -hmm. Do you, any sense of the veracity of that? Uh, actually, I can't neither, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, say this happened or th or didn't happen. You know, I can I can't in in, in both si on both sides because. No one knows really what happened. Yeah, it's it's possible both stories might be right. I can say that if it's actually precisely regarding the regime, when you say the the thugs related to the regime, I don't know if there are there are thugs uncontrolled by the regime or there are thugs you know who who are pro regime but are not controlled by the by the army and the you know and the government over there. It's kind of a lost story and. You can't really go there and bring uh, uh, the, the accurate piece of news you want. Uh, at the same time, what you are saying about uh, you know the thugs of the regime going there and killing these people, also the regime is saying about uh, is talking about uh, Tunisians and Libyans who went into this uh, uh, into this village and other villages and killed. But 
I can't believe any of those uh, stories, and uh, I'm actually afraid of uh, uh, that there are, uh, maybe there is a third party right now in Syria that is uh, really interested in igniting the, the, the fight over there and turning the crisis into a real sectarian war and taking things towards sectarian cleansing, cleansing around uh, the Syrian territories. And who would that third party be? Well, what kind of forces might it represent? You know, many, many forces right now have the interest in keeping the situation in Syria as it is. Uh, you know, uh, uh, right now, uh, Syria, before, before the crisis, was playing uh, a, a great role in the, in the uh, war uh, against Israel in, this, in, the, in the region. They were backing Hezbollah, they were uh, backing Hamas and the uh, resistances in, in several places. Uh, maybe, maybe some people might uh, accuse Israel of doing some things, but you know, I can. I'm just uh, right now speculating, and I can't be giving facts in this time. Just saying that this is kind of analysis. Many uh, other Arab uh, states might be interested in keeping the situation in Syria as it is. So uh, no one really knows what, uh, who, who is doing what, and who is killing who in Syria. But is there any doubt that the Syrian uh, regime is responsible? for many atrocities. I, I, I say that also adding, we know that the opposition, the sections of the armed opposition, have been involved in sectarian uh, you know, killings as well. But, but the uh, Syrian government's claiming their hands are clean. I mean, do you, what do you make of that claim? It's obvious that uh, the, the regime uh, did a lot of atrocities and uh, there are many, many crimes that were done by the regime in several places or at least by people connected by the regime or by thugs uh, who are pro-regime. Uh, this can't be uh, even, you know, you can't even think about uh, refuting such, uh, uh, such claims because I think these are uh, uh, confirmed. But, uh, you know, uh, when, when you talk about, uh, about, about the regime's atrocities in several uh, areas, uh, it's, it's, it's clear that also the regime in other areas was trying, you know, uh, as much as they can to, uh, you know, stop the revolution from uh, getting bigger and bigger. Uh, no, there, there were a, a lot of things said about the role of, uh, you know, of ag exaggerating what was going on in Syria, and uh, the, the Syrian regime tried through the uh, pro, uh, pro, uh, you know, the media that uh, the state-run media or the straight-controlled uh, media to show that uh, they are not responsible for several uh, several uh, uh, crimes that were committed in the country, and they tried to show these by uh, video or by uh, you know some uh, documents uh, so yeah you know no one can 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 deny that this happened uh, during the the, the past uh, months of the syrian revolution now the kofi annan plan is there any uh, hope for it or is it finished that uh, this regime seems to be it's going to fight to the bitter end uh, to you, you know uh, the, to the regime uh, when you when you are saying uh, the regime is fi fighting to the end they have no other choice other than fighting till the end because today any uh, any any step back by this regime means that the regime will fall. Uh, to be frank, uh, the, the the Syrian opposition showed to be uh, really stronger than other oppositions, either though they are not uh, united and they are divided, but they were able to do a lot of uh, gains in the country. They were able to control several uh, regions. Uh, I can give from my uh, ex uh, uh, experience, from my former experience in, in Libya. I remember the the Libyan uh, rebels. They weren't able to do what the Syrians are doing. They were uh, at, the, at the time we were in Libya. They were waiting. Uh, the the the, the uh, strikes by the uh, NATO to be able to uh, to jump from one area to another. Uh, you are talking about uh, uh, Syrian opposition and Syrian uh, you know militants who are able to take uh, uh, control of several uh, cities and several villages uh, without the presence of uh, uh, an aerial cover. So. It, it seems the, the, the Syrian opposition's uh, uh, militants are strong enough and they are having and receiving uh, good uh, and big amount of, uh, of, of weapons uh, so that they are able to uh, push the regime into the corner and tell the regime that you have no other choice. Either you fight, either you fall. And they're doing this primarily with, with the backing of Saudi Arabia. 
It's not only Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia is one of those who are backing the, 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 the revolution in Syria. But you have also the Qatari uh, uh, support, you have the European support, you have the American supports. You know, it, it's, it's, it, it, might, it might differ from a country to another. Maybe the Qataris and the Saudis are, are giving the money, uh, the Europeans are, are giving the political support, the Americans might be doing other strategical things. So uh, there is a big support given to this uh, revolution, to these uh, militants who are fighting right now in Syria. And uh, after uh, 18 months, uh, around 18 months of, uh, or less maybe, uh, of, of, uh, of the fight in, in Syria, they are able to control uh, several areas. Today, if you go to Homs, Homs, uh, there are several uh, uh, cities in Homs or villages that are controlled by the, by the rebels. Also, if you go to Idlib, if you go to Hama, if you go to the stronghold of the, of the regime in, in Aleppo or in Damascus, there are several alleys and neighborhoods that are controlled by the, by the the, uh, uh, revolutionaries. So they, they, they were able in the, in the past uh, year and, and, and a few months to do something. And that's why today the, the, the right. regime is fighting. The, 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 Kofi, last, the Co uh, Kofi Annan uh, has called block. for the opposition to stop armed struggle and, st and pursue a peaceful mass protest. He didn't co quite come out and say it, but the media is interpreting that's what he's saying, that this should be lower the level of the violence. I mean, is there any sense the opposition might do this? And is, is there any, any sense the Kofi Annan plans going anywhere? Um, uh, actually, uh, actually, when we are talking about the opposition, we have several oppositions. So today, if you, if, if Kofi Annan was able to convince one party in the opposition to lay arms, or at least you know to, uh, to try to calm down things, other parties in the opposition won't. Because today, when you are talking about the Syrian opposition, you have the. Uh, the, those uh, and the Free Syrian Army, or, or the, uh, those deserters of the army, who have you know several thousand. At the same time, you have some people who are you know are not under the FSA and they are fighting for, you know for themselves. Uh, others are affiliated to some jihadist groups who were able to infiltrate to Syria. Others were inside Syria. Arms today in Syria is, uh, is 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 over there. It's it's like uh, uh, it's like rice. Yeah, I can say everyone have arms. Everyone can fight. Everyone you know have the the, the power. I was in in Damascus like two or three weeks ago, and uh, I had a lot of uh, you know um, uh, remarks about what I saw. Uh, Damascus is not the city I, I used to know before. Uh, everyone is afraid over there because they know that everyone have arms and everyone is ready to go uh, to the streets at night and shoot and make some, you know. So uh, this country today is, 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 is a full chaos, is a whole chaos. Right. And just, just quickly, in terms of what the spillover into Lebanon, it, it, the, there was fighting taking place between pro and anti-Assad forces. Uh, to what extent is that continuing and, and how serious is this? It's over in Lebanon right now for the clashes in Tripoli and also for the clashes that took part in took place in in Beirut. In Tripoli, there were uh, there, there was something going on over there that was really uh, uh, threatening the, uh, the 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 national security, and we were on the verge of going towards a, a civil war in this country, at least in the in the, in North Lebanon. North Lebanon right now is a kind of a stronghold for the jihadists. Everyone over there who uh, uh, who knows Tripoli and knows the region knows that those who control the, the region were the, over there are the jihadists. They have their weapons and they're strong enough and uh, they are uh, doing whatever they can to help the Syrian uh, militants and the revolution inside. Uh, one of the problems that led to the fight in, in, in the north was uh, the arrest of, uh, of uh, a man who uh, the Lebanese government accused, accused of uh, uh, taking, uh, taking part in supporting the Syrian uh, revolution. At the same time, you know, you have a lot of uh, 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 differences between the uh, Alawite minority in, in Tripoli and the Sunni majority over there, though the uh, neighborhood, the neighborhoods are uh, only uh, separated by, uh, by a street. And uh, the irony is that the street is called uh, uh, the, the Syria Road. So this uh, Syria road is, is the only road that, uh, uh, you know, is, is uh, between the two neighborhoods, the Alawite and the Sunni, and they were uh, fighting along this, uh, this whole road, 
and from from area to area, and each one was trying to end the other party. Uh, it was uh, uh, for sure a spill out from the from from Syria because the situation in Syria for sure is is being uh, reflected in Lebanon in several in several aspects of life, uh, other than the security side, other than the political side, even on the economic side. The whole country is 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 kind of uh, uh, connected to all to what's going on in Syria. Thanks very much for joining us, Ali. And Ali will be joining us uh, fairly regularly on the Real News Network as he conducts his new job as chief correspondent for Al Mayadeen. Uh, thanks for joining us, Ali. You're welcome. And thank you for joining us on the Real News Network.